When the basic settings on the FZ300 don't provide the results you want, it's too dark, too light, the colors are weird, you're not in focus, this is the advanced settings video. I'm assuming you've already followed the steps in the first video. First, to correct color, I'm going to explain how to use a custom white balance. If the picture is too light or dark, I'm going to go through the exposure tools and settings. Maybe you'd like the background blurrier or sharper. We'll look at how to do that. And a few more audio tips. When the auto white balance default setting makes the scene too orange from indoor lighting or green from fluorescence, a custom white balance can fix it. Personally, I nearly always set a custom white balance. To set the white balance, I use a gray panel in the X-Rite color checker. A white piece of paper works nearly as well. Press WB on the control dial and rotate the dial to custom 1 to 4. Doesn't matter which, as you'll rarely use the same custom balance twice. Press up, place the panel inside the frame, and press the shutter button. Do this every time you change locations, or every time the lighting changes, even bright sun to shade. And once you're done at this location, remember to switch back to auto, or that will really screw up the color. There's an indicator in the bottom right. You can also fine tune the white balance. Press down and adjust, then tune using this 19 step adjustment grid. For a wider set of color adjustments, including black and white, press F3 for the quick menu. In addition to standard, natural, and a custom adjustment, there are two cine settings. Cine like D for less contrast and a wider range. Cine like V for more contrast. The same settings are available from the menu, where they can be customized, making adjustments to fine-tune contrast, sharpness, and saturation. Exposure can be complicated, but I'll try and keep it simple. Remember that we're in S, shutter priority mode, as video looks best when shot in the 130th to 160th range. For now, ISO and aperture are in auto. The simplest exposure adjustment is an EV, or exposure value adjustment, and this works in all exposure modes except M. Touch the video camera icon on the right of the screen. Touch the square with the plus and minus symbols. Press above for lighter, below for darker. That's the simple method. Alternately, you could press the F3 button to use the quick menu. Turn the dial to select exposure compensation. Press up and then turn the dial to the setting you like. If it's just generally dark, an inexpensive LED light, this one's under $100, has a brightness dial and has a thing to attach it to the camera. That way, you're always visible. But putting the light up and off to the side may provide a nicer image. Going beyond that, first, let's configure the meter. The meter measures the light in the image. It's the scale at the bottom of the display. Select the meter mode from the quick menu. The multi, the default, measures the whole image. Center measures and adjusts to the objects in the center. Spot on a small selective area. Touch to select. Aim for your eyes. This is good if there's a lot of light on you and you seem to be bright, or the opposite, if there's a lot of light coming from behind and you're dark. If this makes the image very contrasty, go back and select Cine like D. You can't always trust your eyes or the monitor, so use custom settings page four to turn on the histogram and use your finger to position it on screen. I like it on the right side, near but not at the bottom. You'll see why in a minute. The ideal histogram display is nicely balanced between the left and the right. Too much on the right is too bright, left too dark. In order to make adjustments to modify it, press the camera icon and change from S to M. In manual, the F1 button toggles the dial between shutter and aperture. When the bottom right says F, you can adjust the shutter which should stay from 30 to 60, the second number from the bottom left. When the bottom right says SS, the dial changes the aperture, the first number. Smaller numbers let in more light. So far, we've taken advantage of auto ISO, but when we switched to manual, it reverted to ISO 100. Use the quick menu to adjust ISO to brighten the scene when the aperture can't. Remember that the larger the setting, the more noise. If you've turned the ISO down to 100, the aperture up to f11, and it's still too bright, a neutral density filter, an ND filter, the FZ uses the 52 millimeter diameter, can help make the scene darker. Finally, on menu page five, there's zebra, a method preferred by pros. If the talent has pink skin, set zebra one to 70. For darker skin, use a lower setting. Set zebra two to off or 105. 
On custom page 7, configure a custom button, I'm using F4, and go to page 11 to select zebra pattern. Then use F4 to cycle through the zebra displays without going through the menu. Zebra 1 for skin. If the stripes display on skin, the exposure is good. Zebra 2 displays overexposed highlights. Let's just say there shouldn't be any. Close the iris to a larger f-stop until zebra 2 stripes are gone. An ND filter may also be useful to achieve a blurry background, as you'll want the lowest f-stop possible. Use a focal length in the 100 to 200 range, set aperture to f2.8, and adjust the ISO to compensate. Keeping the subject as close as possible to the lens provides a nice blur. For a sharper background, use a larger f-stop. Again, adjust the ISO to compensate. Now you can see the noise. The touchscreen is the easiest way to get yourself in focus. The FZ300 has lots of other ways if that's not working. Leave the focus switch on AFC, Continuous Auto Focus. Use the quick menu to select the focus area selector. Face eye detection is useful if the general 49 point setting isn't. When you're moving around a lot, try tracking. Select it and touch the object to be tracked. When neither the performer or the camera is moving, I use manual focus. Spin the focus dial, a little expanded view window appears on screen to help get the subject nice and sharp. There are several audio settings to be aware of. The wind noise canceller has off and high modes. High might help on a windy day. Off will produce a better quality recording inside. By default, the limiter is on, and I suggest that that's the best setting. If your level of expertise knows why and when to turn it off, be my guest. For a concert or other loud sounds, the audio meter may be displaying red. Use the mic level adjustment to adjust until the meter level is lower. For better quality audio from a single person on camera, use a lav mic. For better quality ambient sound, use a shotgun connected to the mic jack. The wind noise settings are different when using an external mic. Wind cut has four settings, but without a headphone jack, trial and error is the best way to tell, and with the FZ300's tiny speaker, it may be impossible to hear the difference. Zoom mic setting reduces the stereo effect when you're zooming in. It makes a small difference. Well, now that you're aware of these settings, experiment with them before making any dramatic changes to your production workflow. Remember, the camera's reset function is a great way to get back to square one. If you have a specific question or a problem, please ask. I respond to all comments and questions.